Well, what I would say is that there is no such thing as too ordinary to write about, whether that's life or um, a scene in a novel. Now, what's interesting to people, whether it's memoir or fiction, is the truth. True. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, sometimes, often the truth is difficult to arrive at. And the reason is um, not because we know the truth but, but are going to uh, sidestep around it, but because we, are, we, we individually um, do, have not faced it, have not faced it, or have not looked close enough. Now, there's a, uh, there's a scene in a book. Um, it's, it's a novel, and I, I can't remember the author. I think it might have been Updike, but I'm not sure. Um, and I believe it took place in like the 1930s in a farmhouse in the Midwest, and it was a very hot night, and somebody was upstairs in one of the bedrooms getting ready to go to sleep, and they were naked underneath a sheet. The window was open because it was so hot, and out the window they heard gunshot, a rifle. What they did is they moved the sheet off their body and listened. And when I read that, it stopped me. And I thought, yes, that's right. That's right. Now, it's a little bit odd if you think about it, if, if you've heard a gunshot in this sweltering summer evening in the 30s or the 40s, and why would, you, why would you move the sheet off your body? But, and it, it doesn't make any sense when you think about it like that. But, if you put yourself into that bed in that farmhouse and you hear that gunshot, you will very quickly discover that even the slightest movement of that sheet over your skin will generate noise in your head, like a sound. So you have to immediately get rid of it so you can listen. Now, a less careful writer would have said something like, um, I don't know, what's a good 1930s name? Uh, what is a good 1930s name? Gordon um, angled his ear to the window and, um, you know, uh, and, and listen for whatever sound. And w you would read that and, and then you would move on and you wouldn't think about it and, and you wouldn't object to it and you wouldn't, you wouldn't probably have any opinion at all. And you certainly understand what had happened. But when you read the scene with the sheet, that puts you there. You've experienced it. And that's... Um, at its heart, it's a pretty ordinary moment, you know. Um, the, the thing for someone just starting off is um, to write. A lot of people in writing, writing programs spend a lot of time um, writing assignments and very little time uh, on their own writing. You need to... Um, there's a certain athletic um, quality that you need to take into consideration. You need to have a limber, limber fingers, you know, whether you write with your fingers or type uh, on your laptop, but you need to have a limber mind and you need to be able to, the goal is to, uh, to write without judging what you've written, at least right away, and um, without editing right away. Because um, if you have an opinion too quickly, it, it could be wrong. Um, so the, the most important thing for a writer to do is to write. It, it really doesn't matter what you write um, as long as you are able to, to write fluidly, very, very quickly, very quickly, very effortlessly. It needs to become not second nature but really first nature to you. Um, and, and read. You need to read. And you need to read... Um, you know, excellent books and then some bad books. Not as many bad books, but some bad books. So that you can see what both look like and why both are what they are. 
Um, you know, one thing is um, was so helpful to me was to read books that I I didn't begin reading until I was 24. And um, when I did begin reading, I could read. I just I didn't. Um, but when I did begin, I, I chose books um, because of the cover. Um, I didn't I didn't have any sort of formal education, so the names of authors didn't mean anything at all to me. But the covers did. And that uh, proved to be a, a very interesting way to choose books. Um, and it, it did expose me to some that I wouldn't choose on my own um, that are among my favorite books. So, you know, a lot of uh, guys starting off writing, you know, like Seattle kind of skateboarder guys want to write, they might not pick up The House of Mirth, you know, but they should. They should pick up The House of Mirth because that's a very, very good book. Or, I don't know, you know, Moby Dick. Moby Dick, you know, I don't want to read about a big fish, you know, about a whale. I don't want to read about a whale. But I remember when I read the first page of Moby Dick, I thought, is this, is, wait a minute, is, is this what I think, you know? And um, it's, you can, you can sort of tell that it must have been kind of subversive in its day, you know, kind of Dave Eggers of its day. Um, just like, uh, oh, well, what, what is it? Uh, um, Ira, what's his name? Rosemary's Baby. The novel, Rosemary's Baby. If you just read the first uh, three pages, it might even be two, but no, th I think three pages, you'll see that it's a it, of its period, it's just piss elegant. It is a piss elegant book that is brilliantly constructed to create just very, very uncomfortable tension. I think it's on the third page when the time is announced and the clock is set. And um, while these aren't things you necessarily will um, take notes on and, and, and become consciously aware of, if you read them and you're fully in the book, you have now experienced them. And that will help your writing. So I think I would try to encourage people to write um, less with their brain, you know, less, less with, a, and, and more from a more subconscious, from a subconscious area to trust. You've really got to make a leap of faith and trust, trust that, uh, that you will know what to do, you know, when it, when the time comes.